Welcome everybody to Bomber HHS Dialogue for today's webinar. Hello. Let's start with our webinar for pelletizing solutions for today. Make your logistics more sustainable is our topic for today. And before we start with the topics in itself, I want to make you familiar with our webinar tool that we have. Uh, first of all, cameras and microphones are disabled and we will record this webinar and share this afterwards to all the participants. Um, for communication with us, uh, the chat function is always available. And um, if you lost connection, just refresh your browser and you will be redirected into the webinar tool as soon as, as it works. Uh, at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session where we can answer you all your questions. So let us know your open thoughts and your questions uh, for the Q&A session at the end. Um, yes. Just a short agenda for, for today's webinar. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce a little bit about Baumray HHS for those of you which are not really familiar with our company. Then uh, we will start with a pelletizing pre presentation and a Q&A session um, at the end. Who will be there for you today? So that's Martin Kotecki, my friend from Business Development Manager and Packaging, and myself, Andreas Brandt, Head of Marketing, and now I want to do, introduce you a little bit um, about the ba Baumer HHS company. Um, Baumer HHS is for more than 35 years partner of the packaging industry. Um, we are worldwide represented in more than 100 countries. And yes, we're working from the headquarters in Krefeld in Germany, and we have a production site in Berlin. And worldwide, we employ more than 350 employees. And the export part of the company is more than 75%. And we have subsidiaries in many countries and serve more than 100 countries uh, worldwide with our sales and service network. We are a member of the Baumer Group from Switzerland. And yes, in which areas Baumer HHS is represented? So we have many parts in the packaging industry, which we cover with our gluing uh, systems and our quality assurance systems. So when e-commerce, all the envelopes that you have are glued with Baumer HHS systems in print finishing, we're looking for folding and gluing of the leaflets and so on. In the end of line, we are gluing the packages, we close the cornflakes boxes and in folding carton, all of the folding cartons worldwide that you use are mostly glued with Baumer HHS. The corrugated industry is a very big one, and uh, for the smokers of you, the tobacco industry is well served with Baumer HHS equipment. So this is just a short interview and introduction of the Baumer HHS company. And for now, the, um, I would like to hand over to my colleague Martin Kotecki, who will give you insights on the pelletizing solution. Martin, the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Um... I'd like to share my screen. I hope now you can see my presentation. And this can be maybe a sign now. So wonderful that's working. So also welcome, welcome from uh, my side and thank you that you're participating today or a uh, short uh, outlook on that, what we would like to do with you um, in case of pallet uh, securing. So this is my topic for you today, the solution for the sustainable, uh, sustainability in the end of line and packaging logistics. And I would directly start with, uh, yeah, the first, or my first question to you at the end, um, is plastic and the packaging process an issue for you? Um, second question directly following, um, do you work with approximately 400 to 600 gram uh, of plastic film uh, to secure your uh, pallet today yeah, for the transportation and so on. Um, also for internal logistics. Um, or do you use uh, coated paper layers or even uh, plastic interlayers for the internal logistic? So three questions uh, that you can, uh, I guess, definitely answer. If you find your topics here on this slide, um, I think we have a solution for you or minimum something we need to talk with you about or, or 
uh, service partner in your country um, and our dealer to help you in these kind of questions. But have a look on this. So our aim, of course, um, is a more sustainable solution for your packaging process. We, we have the goal that to reduce the plastic film up to 90% is an option. Reduce operation costs, of course. I mean, reducing uh, costs is, I think, for everybody of us, uh, uh, a topic everywhere. Um, we can reduce the operation costs, for sure. Um, and would like to avoid waste uh, at your customer's premises at the end. Uh, so that we don't need to uh, recycle so many uh, material uh, which maybe don't need to produce anywhere. Rethink, renew, recycle is also that one of our, um, yeah, you see this in the logo, um, our goals and our vision for the future. So, yeah, um, I think a normal question has to rise up now uh, that works and how can that work? Um, that's, uh, yeah, the reason why I'm here today, I would like to explain something uh, or a little bit about um, the solution, how we can achieve these kind of goals. So the first answer is an anti-slip uh, coating film. Um, so means that it's a customizable uh, to any kind of packaging solutions. Uh, all your packing looking different. In your factories, you have different sizes, you have different goods, you have different weights and so on. Um, and we have an application that uh, could be integrated on the packaging unit itself. Uh, so during uh, the packaging process means behind your packing line and in front of your logistic area. Yeah? So you're, you're over to sell. Um, and in this area, we can we can code these your, your, your pack size uh, with your individual um, anti-slip film. And that means at the end we, we can reduce the, the cost for materials roughly about 100,000 euro, but of course, this is just a sample calculation. Um, that is something what we have to make individual with you together um, and your dealer um, in your country. Well, let's have a look on some samples. So I would like to divide this in two steps. So our first step is um, to avoid any kind of interlayer. So we have a picture here on the left side. Um, we have probably the solution that you're using today uh, with some interlayers between the packaging layer itself to get uh, better stabilization um, and a kind of anti-slip. So there are a lot of uh, papers and foils available um, to yeah, better have a better stabilization in the pellet itself. Um, so, but that means at the end that you have also quite high um, operation costs because of high uh, material requirement and at the end also a lot of yeah waste or res material that need to be recycled um, at the end customers because when he has to unpack this um, he has to take care what should he do with this uh, material and on the shop floor in the, in the uh, supermarkets and so on. <clears throat> so what is our solution? Um, we're going to apply a, a hot melt uh, layer on this uh, um, spur application. So we have a non-slip function due to the adhesive, um, but we apply the adhesive only there where it is necessary. So that reduce the material um, and avoid the waste uh, that we normally have with these kind of interlayers between the packaging layer. That is the first step, one option. A second step um, is reducing the foil, the, the plastic foil, um, stretch foil that is normally um, used to make a stabilization of the, the packing um, or of the pallet to create a complete package out of everything. So uh, with the knowledge with, that we have today, maybe have, uh, you have some, some uh, further information on that, but uh, today we are calculating with about five to six uh, windings on on the uh, on the packs itself. So calculating it was roughly 400 gram uh, stretch film to protect the goods uh, that they don't have this kind of slipping effect in the in the production floor and on the on the transportation later. Um, it has of course the benefit that this is a um, acceptable load securing tool. 
um, because it's a connection between the pallet and uh, the shipping goods. Another benefit with the foil is, of course, that we protect uh, yeah, against some moisture uh, from outside, depending where the pallet is, is, is uh, yeah, located or where it's transported. So um, these are the facts today. Our solution um, is a little bit different now. So um, we, we think you can reduce that, uh, the, the plastic material or the foil in general to um, roughly 100 grams. But that means that we have to take care about these uh, friction forces. Yeah? So if uh, we have not that much film, who takes care about uh, any kind of moving of the carton? Um, so that is, in this case, the hot melt, which takes care about this. So we can reduce, in this case, the film. So we have still um, a whole pack for the load securing. Um, we have a connection between the pallet and the shipping goods because was uh, still a little bit stretch film. Or, of course, there are uh, other options like uh, some stripes or something yeah, to make a whole pack out of everything because it is necessary uh for um the logistic for the um for the trucks yeah so for the load securing uh you have to have a kind of uh, um yeah securing the pallets together with the goods um but the hot melt takes care that all these forces um are in that film so you can reduce the plastic material and if you're still using a little bit of the stretch foil you have also the option uh, to protect against uh, moisture from outside Okay, let's speak about some uh, some figures. Let's speak about money, which is, uh, I think, one of the most important topics, of course. Um, as well, I have both steps here. So um, step one, step two, remember step one, only reducing the interlayers. Um, um, I have here a sample single shift operation, um, one of five pallets per produced shift in probably your production. Uh, with about 200 production days uh, every year. So um, I have roughly there are 80,000 uh, euro calculated uh, with the existing materials. Um, I will explain later where this is coming from. Um, and our solution is roughly the half of that. So um, of course, we have to speak about um, another investment. And investment is, of course, a Hotman system where today a Hotman system is not existing, probably. Um, so means together with a controller and all different options which we have in our demo kit, we will speak about this later, uh, maybe we have to calculate with 60,000 euro plus we have to take care um, hot melt is of course something uh, which needs from time to time as well uh, maintenance and uh, even that is uh, in our calculation already integrated and as well energy costs. I know we have a uh, a hot melt system we don't need really uh, a lot of energy um small sizes small tank size and so on but still we have to have roughly 100 euro every year for that hot melt system uh, for energy consumption but at least we um have um in this case reached a return on investment um in about five months or a little bit less than five months so it means every year uh, every month uh, you're saving about three and a half thousand euro for this first step so um, how did we calculate this so let's have a look on the current situation um, like the sample that you've seen before with these red interlayers on my screen here uh, there is a card or a pallet with about 32 cartons stabilized on the on the pallet um, maybe you remember there were four layers on it I'm calculating here was a price for the stretch film of three euro per kilogram um, use 400 grams stretch film for, uh, for each pellet. Um, and the interlayer, maybe you have as well some other figures there. Um, we know there is uh, an interlayer available, just paper, coated paper. We know uh, the, the um, beverage producers use quite often quite big plastic layers, which are far away from uh 63 cents only they pay uh, more or less one two euros for each interlayer so in this case there is even more cost for each pallet in this and my sample here i have calculated for each uh, pallet cost material cost of three euro 72. now let's have a look on the uh, solution with a hot mat uh same conditions uh number of layers um 
packaging layers are four. We have as well as stretch film integrated and also the same amount in our first step. So we have as well 400 gram uh, stretch film. And instead of these interlayers, we have now four euro 50 each kilogram for the hot melt, but we lose use a very, very uh, low amount of hot melt. So that means at the end, a material cost for one pellet is only one euro 84. So we have, uh, we are talking about your um, optimization of uh, 50%. Um, we do the same now for the second um, step. So reducing or get rid of these interlayers and reduce as well the stretch film. Um, once again, same conditions, single shift, one of five pellets, two on production days every um, year. Of course, the material costs are the same like before in our step one. But in this case, we reduce the stretch folds. and means that is even uh, than only production costs every year for about 20,000 euro. Investment is the same. Uh, so uh, we are talking about the, the hot mat system, the maintenance and uh, the energy. Um, and then we are uh, already uh, with a return investment of four, four months and uh, 5,000 euro saving every month. So what have we calculated now? So you can see it looks more or less identical than some slides before. The same pellet size um, for uh, 3 euro 72. And uh, now the difference here on the right side with our solution, we reduced instead of the 400 gram, now the 100 gram for the stretch film because the, um, the uh, friction forces um, is, is handled by the hot melt on the layers on the carton itself. And you have just for the safety of the truck uh, and the moisture of the foil on it, or some stripes uh, when you don't need these foil or want to get rid of the foil in general. You see, there is also a calculation here. Uh, means your dealer uh, in your country, on your partner, your local HHS partner, um, has as well, um, let's say, calculation tools uh, um, available. I'm just checking that. Looks a little bit like. This one here, so that we can um, calculate for you directly uh, what you can expect. Now, with your um, maybe you have in your production several lines with different kind of sizes of boxes. Yeah, so we have a tool here that we can calculate this together with you. Your dealer on site is doing that, so that we can uh, calculate our return investment um, as well. Your glue application, I guess, looks case to case a little bit different. Um, you see in my sample, there is only 0.1 gram on one carton because a very thin layer. I have only 50 millimeters line, uh, spiral application line. Uh, maybe you need a little bit more, you need a little bit less, maybe just some dots, yeah? So that is something what we can individually calculate together with you, um, yeah, in your, in your production. Okay, coming back, um, yeah, what is required? Let's see, um, talking about a little bit uh, the technical uh, requirements, um, how does the system look like, uh, what need to be installed, uh, where do you need to install something, and uh, how can I achieve now uh, this return on investment that I present here. First of all, a rough overview. Um, we have um, for you a demo kit prepared, so, um, so your partner in your area and your sales um, Area has a um, um, demo kit solution, so it looks like this one here. So starting with a uh, with a small melting device, uh, two hoses um, with these low energy consumption. Then uh, we have in the second step two applicators um, to generate these kind of glue patterns that I've shown on the the, the calculation here. Uh, it's a spiral application where you can do as well some dots or lines, so it's very flexible. Um, we have integrated a controller for the glue pattern so that you can program for your different carton sizes the right amount, the right length, the right starting and end point, um, and as well um, some accessories to mount this material in your, in your uh, process line. So somewhere be behind the packaging machine and in front of a, a robot to sell in front of your logistics center. Yeah, the application quantity is that uh, which is uh, which makes the whole thing a little bit different. So uh, we can optimize the stabilization for every pack. 
So uh, for heavy pack, for light packs, for big packs, for small packs. Um, so um, for example, higher or he more heavy materials uh, need as well, uh, not that much uh, coating uh, layer on it. Uh, needs uh, also maybe another material, not a permanent sticking uh, glue on the carton itself. Light goods uh, like croissants or something uh, need a little bit more, but um, also a material or a glue which has a, um, yeah, a higher bonding effect. But at the end, of course, we don't want to really bond fix to, uh, together. Um, but that's <clears throat> something why we, we normally work with pressure sensitive glues um, for medium size uh, materials or not that heavy materials. And that sample, what I've uh, used here, also for the return on investment calculation, um, I have a, uh, a size of uh, or a weight of roughly two to five kilogram for these kind of boxes. Um, I have these four areas where I applied the, the coating layer um, with about 50 millimeter, 0 0.5 gram per meter. <clears throat> it's also important to know that we are not speaking about square meters because uh, it is at the end the line uh, which you can yeah adjust in the in the witness but at the end uh, we are calculating it was gram per meter um, so in our sample it's um, 0 0.1 gram each box uh, so that could be a little bit different in your application maybe it's even lower or a little bit higher this is depending on the weight of your of your goods that you're shipping Another option is when we're talking about really heavy materials like uh, uh, beverage industries, um, a bottle, a glass bottle, something like this. So um, means that we have a really high compression on each carton um, so that we even don't need really a pressure sensitive glue. Uh, so I know all the glue suppliers have uh, different pressure sensitive glues for this pelletizing solution or um, in, in that sample here, just a, a standard packaging material, so packaging glue. But this glue is, of course, after, especially when we apply it in a way like I show here in, in a dot mode, uh, it is uh, cold in, in very fast conditions. So it means after two or three meters or let's say some seconds uh, before you pack this pellet on the, on the uh, or pack the product on the pellet, um, it's already cold, it means you have just a form so that the cartons uh, have something like a connection to each other, but a mechanical connection that you can lose directly when you uh, unpack the pellet. Uh, so that is something for uh, materials which are quite heavy, like uh, I mentioned beverage industries, bottles, something like this. Um, integration, like I mentioned, it is, uh, I think, quite easy because uh, I'm sure you have somewhere in the packaging area um, maybe in a different location, your logistic, sometimes we have maybe several hundred meters between, uh, sometimes it's only 10, 20 meters. Uh, mainly we have somewhere transport belts between the logistics and the packaging area. So somewhere there you can install this kind of demo uh, kit, what we have prepared for you. Um, that is quite easy to integrate, like you see here on the, on the picture, there is something like a bridge. Uh, which you build up over the over the transport belt um, and then we can apply like showing here on some bottles some dots on the tip or uh, yeah just on a carton uh, a thin a thin layer important is just that it is cold before you load the um, the packs on the pallet so that we don't have any kind of a dirt at the um, at the robot cell something like this but as you know, hot melt is, uh, is, is especially when we uh, apply that thin layer, very fast cold. So then uh, it's just a mechanical barrier to protect against the slipping. In the system, like I mentioned, is also a small controller to handle that thing for an automatization process. Um, so we can uh, set up the uh, adhesive pattern. Uh, we have as well, um, so two channels for the glue application, two channels to control um, the spiral function, you, you know, that we have the, the, the glue in rotation. So there are two channels to control that. Um, we have in our demo solution as well an encoder, which you can mount somewhere on the belt. 
but this is in general not necessary. Also, that controller is able to handle a, a fixed speed. So in, I think 95% of these applications, we have a fixed belt speed. So the controller can be programmed with that speed and uh, then you can directly start your application and your saving without any, uh, yeah, let's say big uh, installation time or losing time for, for the installation. So flexible is the system. Um, so you have the chance to um, adjust the application width. So I have here a sample of 30 to 50 millimeter or 10 to 20, depending on what, what kind of material you're packing. Um, the, uh, another influence at the pressure and the temperature of the material. Um, in general, of course, we try to reduce uh, low temperatures so that we have, um, in this case, uh, directly a cold condition at the water cell. Um, and also to saving energy. Um, that is one thing. And it is, of course, also helpful uh, that we don't make, um, let's say, small towers. Because like you see here on the left side, the, the friction force taking care that the cans are not moving. Uh, but if you're building big towers on it, and uh, let's say your um, forklift driver is uh, maybe uh, driving a quite fast uh, wheel and stop immediately, then this tower can maybe move before you have uh, some stripes on the on the pallet. If you do it like on the right side here, um, um, this staggered um, uh, placing on the on the pallet, then you even don't have this topic. So then also your forklift driver can hurry up a little bit and take care um, even that when there is a heartbreak, nothing happens because the Honda takes care about this just uh yeah that we know uh with what kind of material we are coming to you and uh, i hope that we can get in contact with you soon to do some trials with you this is the material which we have here and at your local partner available um based on these guns what i've shown you before uh a melter and accessories so that this kind of installation is done really quickly um so a trial is in this case not a big, uh, not a big issue for us. Yeah, once again, so it's not super complex. It's uh, quite easy to install. But it's how it looks like. So at the end, uh, the final words uh, from my side now. Um, I think with that solution, if we are looking on uh, what the stretch foil is based on, it, mainly it's uh, the PELD. Uh, a foil that is used for, uh, for that um, in the world wide plastic consume is about 40 percent um, so if we have tools and i believe we have here some some quite good tools um, to reduce this kind uh, um, of amount or material uh, in your production and uh, yeah i'm happy if we can if you can do some first trials